Dan, and I understand you're around Stoke on Trent ways. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm in the Potteries, John. So sort of uh, near, near enough on the border of um, Cheshire and Staffordshire. A nice part of the world. Yeah, it says I like it. Some people do, but I love it. Because <laughs> well, yeah, there's the I forget his name, but uh, the, 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 the that famous guy from that 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 sort of nineties pop band doesn't he come from Stoke on Trent or around? He that? does indeed. Yeah, he does. Robbie Williams. Yeah, Robbie uh, Williams. That's, the, the, that's the, the, <laughs> next door neighbour then, Dan. Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, and you've written this uh, great book, and I've got to hear, uh, well, you not can't see it there because of my back screen. It's called Dreams to Goals, that, yeah. that, that you've written it. Uh, I'd like to ask you, I've read it, and I enjoyed it imme immensely. I've got some great quotes, and I'm going to come at, come at you in a little bit so you can explain it or put a bit more flesh on the bones for me about it. But the first question I want to ask you is this. What motivated the book? I think the, the big motivation behind the book, John, was one, firstly, um, I wanted my daughter to know that she can go after her dreams and she can achieve those dreams, rather than me just tell her that she can. That was the main driving force behind the book. Um, and secondly, I think so many people are living unfulfilling lives that I think they need this to, to realise that, you know, we've been conditioned to believe that these amazing things happen to other people and you know, um, you need this to, to happen or you need that. And, and it's just not true. We just don't think it's true at all. And I think that's come through years and years of conditioning that, you know, will take time to change, but I hope this book will be a sort of stepping stone that will help people change that. I'm sure it will be. But but for what you're saying here, it's about responsibility and accountability. Yes. You, what you're saying is that you, you're you capable of doing it yourself. Yeah. Yeah, okay. with, with, um, with the right people around you, I think that's one of the, the sort of steps in there, in there, John, one of the steps of transformation is don't do it alone. You know, these people that, oh, I'm, I'm self-made, I don't, I, I don't like that term at all. I don't think anybody at all self-made. I think everybody's had um, somebody, it might be one person, it might be 20 people around them that's helped them on that journey. And I think, you know, help as many people as we can and, and, and they will do the same for us. Yeah, I think it's very important. You hear it uh, said so many times, don't you? You know, if you're your five best friends, you are going to be uh, sort of within the same income stream, within 10% of what everybody's in. And, you know, so there's a lot of truth in picking your friends wisely, yeah. isn't there? You know, and as you yeah. said, um, people that you can talk to and, and, and help one another, I think is yeah. uh, very important. But uh, did the book, did it turn out the way you expected? Well, funnily enough, John, it was that wasn't the book I was going to write. Um, the book I was going to write. I've had two whizzing round in the head for a couple of years, and this one, um, I think, I felt that because of the lockdown, because of what was going on in the world, that people needed that hope. And, and you know, the woman that helped me um, as the writing coach, and stuff, she says, I think people really need this at the moment. So it definitely didn't turn out as I, I'd sort of first envisioned because I wasn't going to write that one first. But um, it, it, was, it, was a, it was a great process. There's a lot of stuff in there that I did plan on putting, but then a lot of stuff just came as, as the writing took place, really, which was, um, yeah, therapeutic. Um, it was a bit of everything, really. Some, some stuff came up that was a bit hurtful from the past, some stuff that was amazing. So it was a really, um, it was a really emotional process, I suppose. So... It, it, some of it turned out as they expected, but some of it definitely didn't. Some of it probably wasn't initially planned on putting that in there. Yeah, because it, it, it's, it, it's a kind of uh, revealing process. As you start to write, and sometimes, I don't know if you found, you've sort of gotten to this where things, as you start the creative process or juices start to flow, something and then other ideas come to your mind and then you take it to a, a, a certain direction. Did you discover anything about yourself? Uh, or did and it was something that was revealed to you as a consequence of writing the book? I think one thing that was re definitely revealed, John, is that, um, you know, I had the potential to write a book, which before I started that process, I didn't know. I'd set that as my goal at the beginning of the year. It just then happened that we ended up in a pandemic in February, March. All my clients cancelled. So that cleared that space. But I think it, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit 100 miles an hour uh, quite a lot so sitting down and just writing it um 
it revealed to me that, that, you know, I can do that and I can do that again. I had to, um, the writing coach, we were on like a big book lockdown programme. There were six of us on there and she was asking people when they'd write and some were saying, oh, I'll, I'll wait until it sort of fits me. And then for me, it had to become part of that routine, John. I had to write each morning. I got up each morning and I wrote a bit, whether it's some, some days it was rubbish and I crossed it out. Some days it was like some, some gems in there. But I wrote every morning. But, you know, now I've realised I can do that and I can do that again. Oh, that's interesting then. So the thing that was sort of really revealed to you was the discipline within mind and, uh, and saying to yourself, well, I'm going, I'm going to do it. And I think you've got to have a mindset and you've got to say, well, I'm going to do it. Definitely. No matter what, I'm going to make sure this happens. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, I think I was the first one on the big book lockdown, John, who, who, who wrote me book. And um, she said, oh, I'm, like, I'm really proud of you. You're the first one to do it. And I said, there was no way it wasn't getting written. I, I, I mm. decided and made that decision. That book's getting written this year. It might have taken me till the end of the year. Look, luckily, um, it didn't. I got it done before then and the process started. But, um, yeah, I knew it was getting done. I knew it was getting done, no matter what. No matter whether one person read it, 10 people or 1,000 people read it, it, it was getting written that year. And the <laughs> fact that it was written more to show me daughter you can do that was the, the goal, the, the initial goal's already achieved by just getting it out there. Well, that's my next point, because I think what comes across in the book is that your real big why is, is your daughter. Yeah. Uh, um, and, uh, and you mentioned before that you wanted her. There was a gift that you were going to give her. The gift was that really you're limited by your own beliefs and what yeah. you think you can achieve. And uh, how do you, how, how's your daughter accepted that gift? I think so. You know, I think she's 13, so that's probably a work in progress, John, I think. Uh, but, you know, she's, um, as I sort of said in there, she's my best friend. She's my mini business partner. I get her involved as much as I can in what I'm doing with my business as I get involved in her schoolwork and stuff, really. So I'll, I'll write, as I do write something, I'll like, have a, have a read of that and see what you think. So I think I'm sort of instilling that belief over over a period of time. I don't think it's just all, oh, you can do anything, and, and all of a sudden she just goes, yeah, you're right, Dad. I think it's um, it's showing her that that can happen. So the more stuff I'm doing with my business and the more I'm, I'm working on myself, um, I'm showing her that she can do that and set it by that example, really. So, you know, I plan on writing another book probably next year, I think, John. So it'll show her again that, you know, now, now my dad's written another book. So, um, yeah, I think... It's not just telling her, it's it's showing her. Um, I always try and get her not put her eggs in one basket as well. So she wants to be mm -hmm. a teacher, but I always try and get her set up a little business on the side um, so that, you know, you, you've kind of got the best of both worlds. So, so it's a, a, a real case of learning by example. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. You can read okay. everything in the books, but if you're not seeing it, um, then it's harder to instill that belief, I think. Okay. Um <clears throat> There's a, a few quotes that I, I particularly liked uh, w within the book. Uh, one of them is, get out of your own way. And I thought that was brilliant. I, re I, re I really like that. C can you tell me what you meant by get out of your own way? Yeah, I think, um, I think most of the time, John, what's stopping us from getting to where we want to be is us. It's not... Um, it's not other people, it's not circumstances, it's not the environment, it's not the situation. Although all those things are important, I think 99% of the time what's stopping us is us. And get out your own way is, um, you know, get over yourself, get over these limiting beliefs that you've picked up along the way. Get over whatever you're holding on to that somebody's told you or this relationship that you've come out of that's holding you back. Well, whatever that may be, um, get, out, get out your own way. Um, get get over that, and it's not um, it's not to it's not to downplay what people's problems are and, and, and things because you know some stuff's really really deep rooted, but you can do it. You can do it if you get out your own way, and it, it, it is just breaking down those beliefs and, and and challenging them and looking at hold up, where's this come from, or who's this come from? Has this come from somebody in the past? It, you know, I, I had a client who um, had a really abusive, um, mentally abusive stepfather. And when we challenged those beliefs, she didn't believe any of, that, any of those things at all. It, was, it, it all come from this guy, but it, it isn't until you sit down and really go, well, where's this come from? 
well, do I trust this person? No. Do I like this person? No. Then why are you holding on to this belief in this person that you've got no respect for, you don't like? And it, obviously it took time, but we, we challenged that and, and she got over that. So I think, yeah, we've all got something that's come from somewhere that's in some way, shape or form holding us back. And it's challenging it. it it's challenging that and getting out your own way. So I think it's important. Okay, well, thanks for explaining that. Uh, another one that I particularly liked was don't give your kids the burden of your own failed dreams. Yeah. Can, yeah, can you explain that one to me? Yeah, of course, John. Um, you know, um, a lot of adults have long, have long since given up on their dreams, which I think is really, really sad. Um, you know, my book's aimed at really late 30s onwards. It's aimed to people that have... Um, that have, have maybe given up a little bit or they've still got something, they've still got it there, they haven't given up. Um, but then what people do is they'll project this then, their dreams then onto the kids so that they really wanted to be, say, a professional piano player or something. And then they start putting the kid in piano lessons. The kid's got no intention of wanting to go to piano lessons whatsoever. They want to do kickboxing or something that you've done, John, something more physical. But the, the, they, they get pushed. Um, a lot of the time, subconsciously, down a route by the parents that, to, to do something that they've given mm. up on. And you've got, to be really, you've got to be really mindful of that and really careful of that because a lot of the time it's done with the greatest, um, with the greatest compassion. Um, but you, it can be really damaging. It can be really damaging. You've got people I, I, in jobs. I, I, they do it with the greatest of int intentions. I, yeah, I, 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 I firmly believe that. But as you say, it, it also um, that individual person, uh, when they like, for, for use of a phrase, when they awaken and they sort of look at them and they reflect on their own life and, they, and they're asking themselves this question, am I living the life that I want to live or am I living somebody else's life? Definitely, yeah. And I, and I, and I think a lot of people don't realise that John, until they are in the 30s or until mm. they are... Um, they have it a certain age and they've got some life experience behind them. I think, you know what, I, I fell into this. Um, I, didn't, I didn't want to be here. I was maybe convinced into going to university that that was the right route. And it, by no means, it's not everybody, um, but convinced to... I remember me, me, my younger brother, when he dropped out of university, and, and at the time, me, um, my mum and that was, was devastated. Oh, no, he's dropped out of university. It wasn't that my mum was putting her dreams on him by any means, but... Um, he realised that that wasn't the path for him and he took a different path and um, he's got his own business and that now and he's absolutely sort of loving the way that the way things are going. But um, yeah, it's, it's being mindful of that, of, of getting your kids to sort of live your dreams through your kids really, which is, is quite sad. Yeah. But, 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 but it can also be devastating for the receiver as well when they sort of awaken, you know, and then this realisation that they're living a the life for somebody else, you know. Yeah. It's um, that, that it's it's almost very sad in a way, but as you say, you 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 hear about it and you probably see it as well, you know. Yeah. yeah. Look, um, <clears throat> the book uh, I think touches on a lot of themes that make absolute common sense, and uh, it, it's um, there's like a linear uh, approach to the book that sort of rolls out as you, as you take people through different types of um, obstacles that they're going to face. And what you do within the book is help them get over that particular obstacle, or at least give them a, a navigation, how to navigate it uh, and to get through it. But at times the book's hard hitting. And yeah. uh, I think I'd be a, a, a little bit re uh, remiss if I didn't mention that you have a, a tendency to swear quite a bit with, with, uh, within the book. Uh, yeah. can, can I ask why? Yeah, I'm a nightmare for swearing, John, and I'm surprised they haven't swore already, but I'm holding it back, and I swear, you know, on my, on my videos and stuff. Um, I, I, I come from a kitchen, a kitchen environment. I worked in kitchens for years. Um, so it's Gordon Ramsay's fault. <laughs> yeah, it's Gordon <laughs> Ramsay's fault. It was, and it was more of a lifestyle at the time, you know. And But one of the things, um, I'm a big fan of Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V., um, you know, for the people watching it now, Gary V, he swears all the time. And he was tried to, they tried to, um, he, he's, he's more, he's a public speaker. They, they tried to stop him at a lot of places from, from swearing, saying that, you know, you're not going to make it by, by swearing, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
but it's authentic. I think it's it's coming from from that person. You know, it's not just chucking in a swear word. It's just as it, as you're writing, the same as you're speaking. Sometimes words are coming out or uh, um, out of the pen or out of your mouth that you're not you're not planning on on that. So, um, I think a lot of the time, like I did a, a, um, a talk the other day that was dropped on my toes. When it when it's dropped on my toes and not written down, sweat. That's when the swearing talk comes out. <laughs> but it, you know, it's me. It, um, it, it, it's me. Um, or rightly or wrongly, now I swear in front of my daughter, and I'm always apologising. She doesn't swear whatsoever. So this that you, you know you pick it up off other people. She's like, Dad, like stop swearing. Um, <laughs> it's um, yeah. It's it, it, as you as you're writing, it just. It just comes, uh, and, and what was coming, I didn't want to take that away and go through it and edit it too much. And I did ask the woman who, who, who was editing, I said, you know, it's probably going to be swearing in there. And she says, don't worry about it. If you feel that that should be in there, then then leave it in. So, so yeah, it, I, you know, it's I, something I mean, you need work on, but um, some of those... In fairness, kids... Darren, in fairness, I looked upon it that you were... Um, you were just passionate about it, you know, and yeah. you were trying to punctuate a statement and, and that's exactly the way I I I I, I took it. So look, um, books a fantastic read, and um, <clears throat> where where can they find your book, Darren? Um, they can get it on on Amazon, John, by just typing in "Dreams to Goals," or it says available available on my website, and they can do a little personal message in there, and that's um, "Dreams to Goals .uk. Um, You can get it off either or. You know, if anybody's internationally watching don't order from um, my website because it's like 99p posted <laughs> but um, no I'm, everybody's got Amazon and everybody goes on Amazon um, a lot of the people who tend to order it off my website really are more people that I know that wanted a little message but the, it's available on both okay fantastic and if somebody wants to contact you Darren how, how, how did they contact you um, I'm on Facebook, John, as uh, Darren J. Brooks. I'm also mm. on Instagram as DJ Brooks Life Coach or LinkedIn also as Darren J. Brooks. You know, connect, love connecting with new people. And, you know, if you, if you want any help or got any questions, just, just reach out and I've put that in the book to, to people that, um, you know, if you, need, if you need to ask something or you need some help, always try and reply to all emails and help as many people as possible. And if people really want to go down a coaching route, that's also, uh, that's also possible. Well, Darren, well, look, thank you so much uh, for your time. Look the passion. Me, uh, I wish you and your daughter, Ellie Marie, the uh, best of luck as, as you go forward 